Um, and we just thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 What's up, Pastor Green? What is up? Ooh, I Good. just burped in the mic. All right. <laughs> Pastor Green, this... Oh, I'm sorry. I really... I realized last week that I sound like a jerk. She was like, don't call me Pastor Green. And I was like, yeah, Pastor, Pastor Green. Green. Yeah, you but it right is there. a habit <laughs> of me calling people Pastor. Mm. And I just have to try to break it. Nah, but you are going to be a pastor. I mean, I don't think so, but... Let's just, I think so. but, but no, I, I didn't take offense. I just want to say that. I like I was. No, I know you did. Song. I know in your heart you were upset. No, I, I was good. I felt it. I felt it. No, nah. no, nah, it's cool. You ain't gonna. I, I get no. it. No, I I, I, I'm it good. I'm, I'm good. I just, I was just taking more offense that you wanted to see John McArthur with that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is episode two. Uh, last time when I introduced that, and I did. We did warn everybody it would be a rough intro, mm-hmm. as will this. Yep. Uh, if you don't know, we're in a rough intro right now. Um, <laughs> I called it just, dis- I said disturbed faith. Oh, yeah. At the beginning. Uh, but later, corrected it. I mean, of course, but now, you know, disrupted faith. This is episode two of the disrupted faith mm-hmm. podcast. If you made it through that long. <laughs> Two hour episode, <laughs> and you made it through that, and then came back for episode two. Mm, that's deep. That's deep. That's deep. This is huge. <laughs> Last week was kind of long. Not gonna lie. Uh, so, but we'll see. Maybe this week will be three hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the podcast that long? But anyway, this is episode two of this Disrupted Faith podcast, where we just like to have true, real, honest. Mm. Unfiltered conversations about about what it really means to to follow God. Mm. Conversations that may make um, you know that may be uncomfortable, may be tough to have. Uh, we may say things that we regret, even though who wants to say things they regret. But it's, I think it's important that you know personally that these conversations are had. So you know it's just a platform to be able to hear and be able to have <laughs> these discussions. How is it really? How was your week? Pastor Green, how's everything going? My week was good. It was good. It was busy working, uh, but it was good. It was good. Really good. For those who don't know, mm. many may know, Pastor Green is a world-renowned pianist. <laughs> pianist. You said it right. Yeah. And a piano teacher. Yes. With a million students. No, not a million. No, no. But we are working ourselves <laughs> up to that. Red's a bunch of students, okay? Uh, if you're a piano teacher, watch your students, okay? Because <laughs> not on purpose, but I, I see some parents change their minds about who they wanted to be their teacher when they met Fred. <laughs> nah. They were like, who's that young man? <laughs> so uh, Fred is a world-renowned, very popular piano teacher. I appreciate that, though. How was your week, Tech? My week was good. I spent mm-hmm. most of it fasting and praying. Oh, man, you deep. I'm, listen, I'm a Christian. Actually, I didn't. Um, <laughs> the week is good. No complaints. I am just excited. I'm just excited, you know? I agree. Um, I'm with you. But so that we don't have another three-hour podcast. Mm -hmm. But if we do, we do. Hey, if you made it past the first movie length, (laughs) feature film length, okay, you could have saw Venom. Mm. I heard that wasn't good. I did hear that it wasn't good. But I feel like it's one of those movies you have to see. You're not going to go see Venom? Nah. I don't want to. That's money. Look, that's money. Frugal, frugal friend. It's yeah. Venom. It's, it's some movies that come out that you just have to see. It's Venom. Oh, it's the first movie. Venom movie. It's Tom Hardy's Venom. Tom Hardy's a beast. Uh, I heard that he did real good. It was. I could have predicted. Anyway, this sounds very uh, proud. But I could have predicted that the movie was going to be like this. Oh, yeah. Whenever you have a very slick, fake Dressed in a suit, <laughs> villain. It's always gonna be a bad movie. Yeah, it's just I the agree. same thing. 
But I heard Tom Holly did a good job. I have not seen it yet, but I do want to see it. Um, you know, I heard it did good in the box office. But um, mm-hmm. hopefully there'll be a, another one, uh, you know, and I uh, don't know. Hopefully they'll fix the things that, that went wrong, but I haven't seen it yet. But you cannot endorse Venom. Fred, okay, on the Bible study podcast. Uh, uh, well, I didn't endorse it. I said it was. I heard it wasn't good. I would advise people to save some money and put it into your bank. Uh, get out your flash. Uh, but yes, the the point is, the last podcast was long. What yeah. that has to do with Venom? Absolutely. This is the why the last podcast probably was long. Right, here. we're doing it right now. It probably was. It probably was. You ain't fair. So, Fred, we. You we've you've we've known each other for quite some time. Been so been some time now, man. Over a decade. Has it? Yeah. Cause yeah. me and Debbie have been together for a decade. Oh wow. Yeah, so yeah, over a decade. Over a decade. That's crazy. So you are aware of sometimes the way that I live my life. Yes. I I thought you were gonna say, no, what do you mean? <laughs> but okay, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> sometimes these random things pop into my head, right? Mm-hmm. So, I some I always say sometimes I live my life like a reality TV mm. show star. I just get an idea, and then sometimes I just go do stuff if I can. Not so much anymore, but mm. I would actually like to get back to that. But anyway, I digress mm-hmm. to our pocket. <laughs> um, I would like to present something to you, okay? Okay. okay. Um, so in order to be prepared for the podcast, you know, we tried to talk during the week and say, okay, hey, maybe we'll discuss this. Uh-huh. And that, so that, you know, we're kind of prepared for... Fred is a very prepared man, okay? Mm-hmm. You, don't get, you, don't get, <laughs> uh, you don't get that many students without being a prepared <laughs> man. Um, but anyway, so one of the things that we mentioned... Uh, was possibly discussing just the aspect of doing something for God versus doing something with God. Mm. And we would go more into what that means. Mm. But yesterday evening, something popped into my head. And oh, wanted- this is great. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Okay. So I wanted to <laughs> run this by you, okay. okay? Okay. And it can be up to you mm. what we discuss. Okay. 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 So okay. one is... Mm. And uh, doing something with God versus doing something for God. And I know that sounds kind of like, to the people listening, like, what does that mean? Kind of vague, mm. kind of bland. Uh, but there's, there's more to that if we discuss that. The second one is, mm-hmm. I feel like the church mm. has a obsession mm. with sin. Mm. And you may not feel that way. A lot of mm. now, some people may not feel that way. They that might sound mm. blasphemous. Up, oh, up. Oh. My microphone just fell. Hold on. That may sound blasphemous to some. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I've, you know, that's just what I think. I think the church has a obsession with sin. Unhealthy uh, obsession with sin. And I can okay. tell you, if we have this discussion, mm-hmm. I know I'm gonna say some things. That later I'm gonna be like, I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> well, uh, let's, let's do that subject then. <laughs> all right, then me. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm serious. I'm all right, be afraid of. Now both. I wasn't prepared to talk about it, okay. uh, but I mean, it's you know, like I think that's part of uh, the podcast. Part of what we want to do is just to kind of, um, you know, to a, to a certain extent, like more relaxed feel. Anyway, so um, these are conversations. This is a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So, uh-uh. I t- hold on, my microphone dropped here on me. Man, if y'all could see this, this is low. This is like kind of hilarious right here. I feel like I should help you, no, that's cool. but then I feel like I should, I should let this happen. All right. Uh, all right. Sorry. It's only two episodes, everybody. Only two episodes. All right. We're good. We're back. We're back. All right. So I personally feel like the church has a 
dysfunctional relationship with sin, and it actually causes the problem that it's that they're trying to prevent. Mm, okay. And what I mean by that is, and I'm just going to lay it all out. Okay. Definitely, everything is definitely with the older generation. Everything is trying to get you to stop sinning. Mm. Like you have to not do this, don't do that, don't do that. Mm. You know, in youth group when you were a kid, the big thing was don't drink, don't have sex, don't do drugs, don't have sex. Even though the adults were doing that. <laughs> uh, so you know, those are, those are two big things: don't mm. don't drink, don't have sex. And so it's like you you. You learn this Christianity that is based off of your, not necessarily transactional Christianity like uh, we were talking about last week. Oh, by the way, I would like to add, I heard, there was an update to that story where Lisa Gungo actually came back and she said that she's not an atheist. Okay. That they, she wasn't mad at BuzzFeed, but she just said that they kind of sliced it. Uh, she said she tried to be atheist for a day and it didn't work. I don't I don't know what that means. But okay. so she I don't know. Michael Gungor, she said from her mouth that Michael Gungor said he didn't believe in God. So I don't know if he's an atheist, she's not. Mm. But I I just want to mention that because last week we said that they were both atheists, but yeah. she just said she wasn't. Okay. Anyway, okay. Um th- you develop this like behavioral thing mm. with with your walk to where you're always trying not to sin. Mm. I feel like, and I'll share why more, but I feel like trying not to sin is not the way mm. to stop sinning. Mm. And so when you when you try not to sin, you end up walking back in it. Now, I told you guys I was a troll, so I had to be careful how I say this, but I looked— and I can look more, but I know there's probably some theologians, which I consider myself a PG County theologian, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, the Bible mm-hmm. does not say mm-hmm. repent from your sins. Mm-hmm. So now, right now, people are like, what? Glass mm-hmm. Fever. Stoned him. I, well, I should say it doesn't say it. Yeah, I might, as uh, many times. Okay, because <laughs> I was I was sitting there like I, as I, many I, times <laughs> as we think it does. So you so but you but you are saying it does say repent from your sins. It is it does occur in the Bible. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say show me. Depending on what translation, and this is what I mean. What the what the church. The church has an okay. obsession with sins. Mm-hmm. And I was in Bible study one time, and they were talking about, like, sin or, like, something. And they read one of the scriptures, and it was like, repent from your sins. And and I just started to look it up. And what I notice is, okay. in most non-modern English translations, mm-hmm. the Bible just says, mm-hmm. repent. Mm-hmm. In the normal and and more modern English translation, mm-hmm. the words from sins mm-hmm. are added in there. Okay. And that seems like a small, innocent thing. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, repent from sin. Mm-hmm. Right? What else would you repent from? And so... Mm-hmm. When people are translating the Bible, let's say New American Standard, maybe mm-hmm. an IV, uh, I can't remember w- which one it was, but I, I know it was a couple that were like more modern English. Mm-hmm. They all say repent from sin. Mm-hmm. But when I went to one, maybe like the King James, the one that was closer to mm-hmm. the original text, mm-hmm. from sins mm-hmm. or from your sins mm-hmm. wasn't in there. It was mm-hmm. just repent. Mm-hmm. And then the question may be, well then, crazy blasphemous man what is the significance what is the difference mm-hmm. and what we have done in the, as, a, as a church and maybe this is the con of being a troll because I'm starting off getting you to want to argue with me but really I want mm-hmm. you to see this perspective but I'm starting off provoking you so maybe I have to change that but like <laughs> um, 
we have we need to really understand repentance. So like uh we can go to Hebrews chapter eleven, right? And I'll read that one. Uh-huh. Look, we we going through the Bible today, Fred. Going through the Bible. All hey. right. My bad. I'm sorry, Fred, I blindsided you. No, no I'm, I'm just, look, I, I, I find this very interesting, this topic very interesting. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, mm-hmm. no, 6. Okay. What you looking for? My testosterone. Gotcha. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Well, you know you tell me. The testosterone is not going to have that. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, this is, this is it. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Hebrews, I'm reading from the, the LBE translation, which okay. I love. Uh, I've never heard that translation. Uh, it says, therefore, leaving behind the elementary message about Christ, let us move toward maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Mm-hmm. Fred, listen. Okay. This topic gets me riled up. I know seriously. Mm. So if I just, if I don't shut up, just shut me up. Okay. Because okay? <laughs> okay. this gets, it, it is, it, it gets me riled up one because I just, I love the word. I love these discussions. I love God. Yeah. It just represents, it just represents the goodness of God to yeah. me. And I know I'm just going on and on without really clarifying my point but my point mm. is he says Hebrew in Hebrews chapter chapter 11 one of the elementary principles that we need to learn mm-hmm. is repentance from dead works mm. okay and so what we need to do in order to just from a, a basic standpoint to really understand repentance from dead works is to understand what dead works are mm-hmm. and to also understand what repentance is is Mm -hmm. and so as a church because we have such an an obsession with sin Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. we automatically Mm -hmm. tie in Mm -hmm. the word repentance with Mm -hmm. sin Mm -hmm. it's just a given repent sin repent Mm -hmm. sin Mm -hmm. but by itself Mm -hmm. the it really just means to change your mind Mm -hmm. and so i'm about to be a bad theologian Without giving the actual like Greek words, but um, I, I looked it up because I was, you know, we I think we were going through this in one of the Bible studies, yeah, and yeah. we're talking about repentance from dead words. And so there's three shades of repentance and three ways that it's mentioned in the Bible. One is to change your mind. Mm-hmm. One is to change a decision, mm-hmm. and the other is ah mother freaker. One was to change your mind. One was to <laughs> to. And this is why I get it's it's good to talk about stuff before. (laughs) Uh, Fred Ways always wins. Uh, But one is to change your mind. Uh One is to, oh, yes, yes, yes. One is to change your mind. One is to change your decision. And one is to regret. Mm. So they sound very close, but Mm. they have subtle differences. Mm. You can change your mind about doing something that you don't regret. Mm -hmm. So let's say... That you don't think is wrong. Let's say you're going to smack somebody. Mm-hmm. And you're getting ready to smack them, but people come in. Mm-hmm. And so you decide not to smack them. Mm-hmm. You have changed your mind mm-hmm. on whether or not you were going to smack them, but you don't regret the fact that you, that wanted, you wanted to, to right? Yeah. And so that's so that's one aspect. You have to change your mind. Mm-hmm. I, I was going this way, but I'm deciding to turn around. Mm-hmm. The other aspect, as we talked about, is to regret. Like, um, it talks about, and I, and I don't know if this was the right repentance, but mm-hmm. when, you know, uh, when God was getting ready to, well, that was when he changed his mind, when God was getting ready to mm-hmm. destroy the children of Israel, mm-hmm. and it said that he repented mm-hmm. of the evil that he was getting ready to do against the children of Israel. God changed his mind. Mm-hmm. So, one is to regret something, one is to, to change your decision, and one is to ch- change your mind, mm-hmm. which is I am I'm no longer following this path of thinking. Mm-hmm. So like let's say, and I know I'm sorry, friend, I'm about to show No, up. no, 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 no. Um, go ahead. 
But like, let's say you were getting ready to smack somebody, right? Yep. You, the full circle of repentance, which would be a good term, it would be you decided not to smack them. Mm-hmm. You regret smack. You regret feeling thinking, that way. Feeling that way. Mm-hmm. And you have decided, to, you have changed the way you resolve those type of issues mm-hmm. so that smacking is not mm-hmm. a problem. Mm-hmm. So that's changing your mind, uh, regret, mm-hmm. and changing the actual action. Force of action. Right. So that is, in a nutshell, and I, I hope that makes sense, that is makes what sense. repentance is. To me, it makes sense. I like that. Uh, it's, it's like that whole mm-hmm. thing. And so when, when uh, Paul says, or the writer of Hebrews says, Repentance from dead works mm-hmm. that is changing your actions, changing your mind, mm-hmm. and changing um, and regretting mm-hmm. the, your your trust in dead works. Mm-hmm. Long story short, and, and, and why I say that our obsession with sin is dangerous, and, and what you know the whole thing with repentance from sins not being in there. Mm-hmm. When Jesus came. He actually could have said repent from sin, mm-hmm. but he what he, his message was repent. Mm-hmm. He wanted you to change your whole mindset, like mm-hmm. the whole system that the Pharisees and that everybody yeah. had built up was was wrong. It wasn't just your behavior, mm-hmm. and this is what I mean with the the danger of the relationship that we have with sin mm-hmm. is that we're just trying to correct behavior, yeah. but we're not dealing with the heart. Yeah. So when Jesus comes and he says, repent, mm-hmm. he's not just saying, stop that action. Mm-hmm. It's just like in the climate now where, okay, it's not cool. Or at one point it wasn't cool to be racist. Mm-hmm. So people would hide their racism. Mm-hmm. That's not true repentance. Mm-hmm. That's just you hiding your racism. Yeah. Covering so, up. yeah and so like with, with the church, with our obsession with sin, we make it so much about sin that we're not dealing with how do how does God change my heart? Because mm-hmm. once my heart is changed, mm-hmm. then my behavior changes also. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I would just take a break for it because I've been going for like 50 minutes. But do you, do you see what I'm saying? I see. I see exactly what you're saying. What are your thoughts, Pastor Green? Um, I think I think you. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think. Uh, Focusing on behavior um, is uh, is like a dangerous, dangerous thing, and that Jesus definitely does um, did care about the heart. And I like the way you put that, of uh, you know Jesus' um, message, uh, Jesus, um, what Jesus taught, what Jesus preached. Um, I like the way you thought of, talked about also, and again we're kind of winging it right now. Right. So I'm just kind of building off things that you have said and thoughts that came across my mind. But just the way, just the way you think and the way you look at things, um, kind of going against the uh, ways that was uh, set up within the culture, the Jewish culture with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all that. Um, Jesus always challenged their way of thinking and approaching things. Um, he always challenged uh, the quote unquote like that system that they that was set up like he always challenged that um, and and turned to his disciples and the people that followed them he challenged them to think differently um, and I think that is that is definitely uh, you know I, I always um, and you know I won't say I always but I think that's the biggest thing about understanding about Jesus. Because he, he, he could have very well walked this earth and continuously condemned people. Mm-hmm. And I think the part, another part, just kind of going to, you know, why it's dangerous not to get caught up in the actions. Um, because the actions is not what makes us, uh, makes people sinners. Now, what makes us right. sinners. Mm-hmm. It's not the actions. Um, David said in Psalms that, you know, in sin I was conceived and I was born into this. I was born into iniquity. It was because, like, it's, it's the, it's the, Huma- the fall of humanity that makes us th- that it's not the action it's not like um i think that sometimes maybe we know it or um uh, we don't know it uh but people get caught up like okay a, b- a baby is born that person is that person is pure and righteous mm-hmm. um and then the moment that baby does 
an action, then that would make that baby in need of a salvation or a sin. But that's not the case. You know, it's, the case is the fall of humanity back back with Adam and Eve. Right. That was <laughs> that started everything. Mm. Um, so I think it does become, and that's what Jesus was. Why Jesus had a problem with the Pharisees because they were trying to do this or don't do that, and it gave off this appearance of righteousness and them knowing God. Um, but Jesus challenged them. It was like, no, like you, <laughs> you like 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 you you got it mixed up. You're doing these actions, but um, you in need of salvation. Like you who are priests and you who are these holier thou people. I'm like that, that's the that's the people he had a problem with that he addressed consistently. But he sat with quote unquote sinner, sinners and, and and people that were. Uh, that you would deem Jesus not want to eat with and sit with. He sat with them. Right. He sat. He sat with them. But he always rebuked and came against uh, the people who were caught up in actions mm-hmm. and caught up in doing things and this rules and regulations and relating that to this is how well I know God is because of my ceremonial washings right. and how I keep that. You know, this is you know so. I think that is, I think that aspect is very important, uh, and that's a dangerous thing um, to get so. When someone gets so wrapped up in, you know, don't do this and do that, and forget that uh, Jesus came, and I lo- that's what I love about John three sixteen, um, is that it says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe him shall not perish. And another part I love about later on in that scripture, it says that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but so that he may save the world. Um, And I think the reason why I, um, actually, I want to read that because I don't want to miss John 3, John 3, 16. And, and, And this is why I always love this scripture. And I just want to say, Fred is a true Christian because he's no. using a paper Bible, so <laughs> no. he's not googling the words in the scripture. He's going to the scripture because he know it. No, 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 no. John, we we know John three sixteen. Don't don't try to make this. <laughs> John three sixteen. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I always used to stop there, but going on kind of. Goes with what we talked about, and I love this part. It said, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And that's where I want to stop because that is kind of goes back. We was born into this thing. It says that he who believes in Jesus is not condemned. But who, he who chooses not to believe in Jesus is not the fact that their choice, their choice of not believing in Jesus, uh, okay, that was the deciding fact. Now, now, no, it was they were already condemned. We were already, you know, and, and Romans talks about this. We were all fell short of glory. We were already in this boat. Okay, so the the purpose of Jesus Christ, the purpose of Jesus Christ was to save us right. from that. To save us from that. So I think kind of tying it back to what you were saying about the focus on the church focus, and I do agree with you, of like actions, it becomes a dangerous thing because you could deceive yourself. For sure. You could deceive yourself. You could like some of these dead works, you could deceive yourself. Okay, you know what? Um, I don't, I'm going to use a simple example. Um because I don't, because I don't, uh, because I don't drink, right. I'm, I'm, I'm good with God. Right, right. That so now that becomes, that becomes like, I'm in, I'm, I'm good with God. Where you know, that's not what that's, that's not what Jesus died for. I mean, that's not what it's all about. Like you know, so I'll, I'll shut it down there. But I, I do, I do agree with you. I do agree with you. No, I, I think that's um, reminded me of the scripture. 
I think, and what that looks like, and for like people who are who may be disagreeing with me, but who are who are actually Pharisees like me, I know they're probably like, well, you you can't just sin and do whatever you want to do. But that's the that's the point. Like, mm-hmm. and what this looks like is in the trap of sin. I'll start with the trap of okay. sin. What it looks like is you go to the Garden of Eden, right? Mm-hmm. Sin brings shame. Separation. Shame brings separation. Mm-hmm. And then separation brings death. Mm-hmm. So it's the sin that brings the shame, that makes us feel unworthy. Mm-hmm. And then that unworthiness makes us hide from God, mm-hmm. as Adam and Eve hid, right? Mm-hmm. They weren't ashamed until they interacted with sin. Mm-hmm. And then that shame made them hide from God. Mm-hmm. And they put distance between mm-hmm. them and God. And so Jesus, uh, Christ came and died to get rid of the shame mm-hmm. and the power of sin over mm-hmm. our lives. Mm-hmm. And, and so, but what that looks like now in the way they set up with the with with uh, the, our relationship that the church has with the sin is let's say you... Um, you are fornicating. Fornicating is a mm-hmm. big one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, What's fornication? You play that. Oh, oh yeah. That, that, that's, that's good. Fornication mm-hmm. is sex before marriage. Okay. Which I feel like 95% of people are doing mm-hmm. who are Christians. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I don't, I'm not saying that's right, mm-hmm. but that's the thing. We don't, anyway, don't, that's, I'm not going to get sidetracked. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's say you're fornicating, right? Mm-hmm. You, uh, no, no, no. Let's do this a perfect Christian day. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I may have said this to you before, but whatever. Mm-hmm. We're having said it to the podcast. Um, you wake up in the morning, mm-hmm. you pray, right? Yeah. For me, I feel self righteous and like a super Christian if I, can read for 30 minutes. I try to read like four chapters Mm -hmm. and then I try to pray for like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. If I can do that on that morning, I feel like, man, I'm I'm saved. Like, so that's my goal each morning. Most mornings, Mm -hmm. I mean, more than most mornings, (laughs) that does not happen. But Mm -hmm. uh, when I, let's say I did that, I read my four chapters, I uh, pray and I'm having an awesome time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like super Christian. I feel like I can shoot lasers with my arm mm-hmm. uh, out of my eyes or whatever. I'm at the bus stop, right? Mm-hmm. God, the Holy Spirit tells me to minister to this person next to me. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm saved. That's God talking mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. I minister to the person, whatever, tell them what God says. They're in carriage, right? Mm-hmm. I go on about my day. Scenario one. Mm-hmm. Scenario two, um, was fornicating mm-hmm. the night before. Mm-hmm. I didn't pray. Mm-hmm. I get up. I go to the bus stop. Mm-hmm. God tells me to minister to that person. Yeah, Because I didn't have my super spiritual time. Mm-hmm. I don't feel worthy. I'm like, is that God? God's not talking to me. I was mm-hmm. just fornicating. You know? mm-hmm. And now that person mm-hmm. doesn't get what God has for them because of how I view myself. Mm-hmm. And so what Christ has come to do is to give you a permanent view of yourself, um, mm, mm. I like that. a permanent pers- perspective on yourself, so that your, you, you know, your own personal behavior doesn't affect what he's trying to do in your life and what he's trying to do in the lives of others. And even if you think about it, let's say you got somebody who uh, pornography is another big thing. They mm-hmm. go and they're like, you know, God uh, hitting the big ones. The, you gotta go big, go big, yeah. go home. They're like God. I went my whole life and I've conquered pornography, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he gets to heaven and God mm-hmm. is like, okay, that's that's what's up. Now I died for that. Mm-hmm. I died for your issue with pornography. Tell me whose life you mm-hmm. changed. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, I spent my whole life trying not to sin. Mm-hmm. So like the the issue with the whole sin, the way we view sin in, in the church is that it builds a very selfish inward perspective of your walk with God, which is, it is about me not doing a thing. And it's something that you said, but it's like, he is looking to change our heart and our heart is what changes our behavior. So right now in the church, we're 
telling people not to do actions, hoping that not doing their actions will change their heart. But instead of going for the heart, mm. their heart will change your actions. The closer you get to God, the less you'll sin. Mm -hmm. So why not point people to God instead of pointing them to, you know, yeah. stopping this action? No one is saying that it's okay just to sin and do mm -hmm. whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, he goes in this long thing. Uh, I want to say Romans or... Romans 7. It may be Romans... Is it Romans 7? He goes on this long thing about how... Uh, and maybe where he's talking about not judging. Shoot, I wish I would have really been able to sit down and go through this, but I will put the scriptures in the show notes so that you guys can see it, uh, that we're not making this up. But, like, uh, Paul goes in this long thing about, like, not condemning, God forgiving sins. I think, actually think it's maybe Hebrews. Because mm. at the end of it, he says, but if we willfully sin, mm. there remains um, for us wrath. And so it's Hebrew. Yeah, I think it is. There is this grace, there is this great grace for us. Mm -hmm. And I know some people, they're Pharisee like me, they may be thinking, well, are you just saying people can just sin and do whatever you want to do? Mm -hmm. um, but what Paul says, and what I what I not believe it, is that then that grace isn't for you. Mm -hmm. Now, for some people who hear that God is forgiving, forgiving you of your sins, if they hear that and they hear, oh, I can just do whatever I want. That's proof that they don't have God. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, they don't have God in the first place. Mm -hmm. But there've been there, there are plenty of people who love God and are trying to pursue the, Him. Grace is for the effort mm -hmm. that to know that He's not holding their sins against Him, mm -hmm. that He still wants to have a relationship mm -hmm. with them. That they use that you know the uh, scripture. I think it's in Romans says the it is the goodness of God. The kindness of God that draws us to repentance. Mm. And so, you know, if you hear that, if you hear that grace and that makes you want to draw closer to God, you know that you love him. But if for for people who hear it and just say, you know, hey, I'm gonna just sin and do whatever I want, then you weren't really with God in the first place. Well, Jesus kind of spoke about that uh in John 14, where he says, you know, if you love me. Mm -hmm. You would keep my commandments, and yeah. Jesus, Jesus. Uh, I mean, I, that's the motivator. Um, that's the motivator. That's really, that's really why the New Testament is the New Testament versus the Old Testament. That's the really the purpose of Jesus Christ. Is that before you know try why it's, you know it didn't work right because it was it was it was in these rules. It was in this trying to stop this, um, and you know humanity and God, like there was, it wasn't, it wasn't right yet because of, be, well, actually because of the sin issue really, but right. um, because Jesus hadn't came back yet. But uh, the purpose of Jesus Christ was to bridge that gap is to now to where we are able to say, where God is saying, okay, Jesus Christ took care of the sin issue. He took care of that. And what for what purpose? And I think that's what you're uh, you're saying too. It's not just to take care of it, right? But it's to restore humanity back to God, like it was originally intended, like with Adam and Eve. It was to restore that place to where me, Fred, being in my imperfectness, could come to a holy God and have a relationship with Amen. Him, and to fall in love with Him. Like you can't cultivate a, a relationship with somebody that you can't really approach. Yeah, and that, that you're afraid of. That you're afraid of. Right. You can't do that. So that's why that's a purpose of Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of the cross to to not just die for the sins and not just to deal with the sin issue, just to deal with it. But it it creates. You know, I'm not trying to get like deep, but. It create now that we can, now we have a place like Jesus said it. Jesus said it before he died. But he said, "Look, I'm going to go to my father, and I'm going to go to your father." Like this is now this thing has changed. Like this is not this is not like just your God as you guys understood it. But I have this deep connection with him. Where I'm calling him Abba Father. Right. But not only that, this is your father now. Right, dude. This is your this is the type of relationship and the connection Where that you, you have. Yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> this is the type of connection that you have with God now to where um, now, now things become motivated from a relationship standpoint. And that's why Jesus says, look, if, if you love me, you would, you would keep my commands. See. Like if you if you if you love me, like if you if you have this relationship with me, if, if we if we in connection, if we in fellowship with each other, because even in that same scripture, he says, actually, I'm gonna read it. It says, uh, it says, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Comforter, that He will abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, but it see of Him not, neither know of Him, but you know Him, for. He dwells with you and shall be in you. I'm going to kind of, it's a lot of things um, in here, but I'm going to go down to verse 21. He that have my commandments and keep them, he, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will make myself known unto him. And then later on in verse 23, if a man love me, he will keep my words. If my, and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our home with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father uh, which sent me. So I think I think even with, I think it's important, like you said, is to, from a relationship standpoint, and I think, um, I think yes, too much emphasis is on like, hey, stop doing that and stop doing this. Um, I that all will fall into place if somebody understands like why. Okay, Jesus died. Like we always hear this, Jesus died for your sins, but nobody goes into why. Yeah, like, right. like, 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 too much. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to just generalize, but like, why did he die for my sins? Right, like, right. like, like, why, why did Jesus go to the cross? What is like? What is the sense? Like, like, like you. So you kind of alluded to the sense. It's not like the action things. It's you know. It's it's. We was all in this boat. It was humanity. Like we was all condemned. You know, like all those little things. Like I think needs to be expanded. Uh, expanded on pun. But I'm gonna shut it down. But I do. I, I do agree with you about. You know, Jesus talked about exactly what you're saying in John 14. It says, "Look, you know, you." Keeping my sayings and right. you doing you doing what you know are and I'm putting in quotations be the good Christian and keeping my sayings that's motivated by your love for me yeah. that's motivated by love. that that is like so true like Fred you get me like freaking riled up like because mm-hmm. even that scripture right mm-hmm. he says if you love me keep my commandments mm-hmm. we think. His commandments are the Ten Commandments. No, no. His commandments are the two. Mm-hmm. Love God, love, love your neighbor with all your heart. Mm-hmm. And so, and then those things, you fulfill mm-hmm. all the law. It's like God right. is looking at the greater mm-hmm. purpose, right? And so it's mm-hmm. like, even I think about like David mm-hmm. and uh, Joshua. Mm-hmm. Like David said, again, when he went with Bathsheba mm-hmm. and he did everything uh, you know, and he killed Uriah and mm-hmm. he did all this shady stuff. He said, against you and against you alone mm-hmm. have I sinned. Mm-hmm. In my world, that's not even true. You mm-hmm. sinned against Uriah, mm-hmm. you sinned against Bathsheba, but mm-hmm. in his perspective, the one that he had a, a relationship with, the one mm-hmm. that he felt like he had wrong mm-hmm. was God. Mm-hmm. And so his relationship was with God was dictating mm-hmm. his conviction. Mm-hmm. And so we, and like you said, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. The question that we should be asking ourselves are, or is, how can I love him more? more. How, can I, how can I love him more? Because in loving him more is freedom. Mm-hmm. And loving him more is, under, is understanding and loving him more is strength. Jesus says you can't serve two masters. Mm-mm. You can't serve God and money. Either you will love one and hate the other, right? Mm-hmm. And so we, we when we deal with the, the topic of sin, we don't focus on loving one more. The more I love God, the more I'll hate sin. And that's the thing with understanding the full uh, definition of repentance because you can stop sinning mm. and not hate it. Mm. Let's talk about fornication. A lot of people won't fornicate or won't fornicate because air quotations 
But uh, not air quotation, but because it's a sin, right? Mm-hmm. But 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 why? But why though? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to steal somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, but like, do do we see the dishonor? Why does it displease God? Are we displeased with fornication or with uh, pornography or with lying or with gossip? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do we have that same perspective and viewpoint on those things that God has? Or are we just trying to check off a list of mm-hmm. things not to do? Okay, I didn't do that. I didn't mm-hmm. do that. I didn't do And this is why I think it's James who says, Whoever knows the good to do but doesn't do it, that thing is sin. So the new, the new covenant isn't about having a law or a set of rules to abide by. It is about a relationship. And you can falter in that relationship at any time. You could, God could tell you to wake up and pray, and you cannot mm-hmm. wake up and pray. And that's the sin. Mm-hmm. It's not, it doesn't have to be like, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be something that is like a law or something written down. But what we have to do is, as a church, is focus on what it really means to fully repent. Not just of our sins, but of everything. Like, God, how do I change my mindset of what is important? Like, uh, I was talking to a, a friend of mine, and he was saying his son... Came to him. We were just talking about like I forget. We were just talking about a lot of stuff, and, we just, and uh, so he was saying that his son came to him, and I thought this was prophetic. He was like, "Oh man, he I'm messing up as a parent." His son came to him. I think he told his son to pray, and his son was basically like, "His son is only like four, by the way, uh, four or five, I think." And his son was like, "Praying is just for when you have bad dreams." And so he was like, no, praying is, you know, prayer is this, that, it's it's important, son. And he was like, no, daddy, prayer (laughs) don't work Mm. for nothing else but bad dreams. Mm. And so he started having like this complicated argument with his four-year-old son about how prayer is not just for uh, bad bad dreams. But his son said something that I think is like prophetic, is like deep. Mm. I was like, God entered that little boy's body. And he was like, daddy. Prayer is just for bad dreams. And he was like, if a fox came in the house, would you pray? Or would you try to kick the fox out? And so he was like, I, I forgot what he said, but you know, I thought about it. And I was like, if a fox came in the house, would you would you pray? Or you know, would you try to kick the fox out? I mean, I would try to kick the fox out, but like, of course, but like the point is like. Has your perspective on what works and what is powerful mm-hmm. changed? Mm-hmm. So we say that we love God. We say that we believe in prayer. But when we're under threat, when heavy times come, have we really changed? Have we really changed? Has our mind really been changed? Mm-hmm. Or do we still revert back to our old ways? The things that we, that we, the certain things that we do to keep that we feel keep us safe. You know what I mean? Has our perspective changes that no prayer does work on everything? Mm. You know, um, I you know I trust God in the worst situations, mm. even though there's something that I could do. Mm. Even Joseph, when he was sinning, uh, or when no, he was sinning when he had uh, what's her name, Potiphar's wife, mm-hmm. was brushing up on him. He said, "I cannot do this." You know, and I don't want to, let me, I'm going to try to read this real quick. Uh, Okay, I did want to read Hebrews 9, but let me go to the scripture with Joseph, because I just want to make sure that I'm not Mm -hmm. making this up, because Joseph, uh, Joseph and Potiphar's wife, uh, Rebecca, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph is, yeah, because Joseph was one. Uh, Joseph is going to be, uh, dreams of Joseph. All right, so we're going to go down to Genesis 37. And let's go. To... 
Oh, I'm sorry, Genesis 39. Mm. And let's go down. All right, starting at verse 7. Genesis 39, verse 7. And it happened after these things, his master's wife, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. And he refused and said to his master, Look, my master does not worry about what is in his house. Everything he owns, he has put in my hands. He has no he has no greater authority in this house other than me. He has not withheld anything from me except you, since you are his wife. Now, how could I do this wickedness, this great wickedness and this, I'm sorry. Now, how could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? It's like he's not even, he didn't even mention Potiphar. He's like, how can I do this thing against God? And it wasn't a thing like where if we sin, we feel like, we regret our sin because we're scared of what God is going to do to us. Mm. We're like, oh, no, I sinned. God's going to kill me now. What was me? But, like, David and, and Joseph were just like, no, like, how can I do God dirty like that? Mm. Like, how do I love God that much that, like, I don't want to sin because it's like I can't do God like that. Mm. They'll freak me being scared of what he'll do to me. I just love him. Yeah, You know what I mean? Like, how do I get... To, to that point, like like Jesus Christ came to set you free from condemnation, the law of sin and death, so that you can enter into a relationship and begin to fellowship with him. If you spend your whole life wrestling, trying to overcome your sin by yourself— and not developing a relationship with Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. that defeats the, the whole, whole point. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I, you know, I don't know. And, and that's where it just, it just, I'm sorry for it. No, I, I, think, I, think, I think what you're saying is, is true. And I think a lot of people need to hear that. I, I, I ran into a lot of people who, uh, because of what, they struggle with or because of what they were doing um they just they just gave up on trying to develop a relationship with god like oh you know i I, I did that so i mean that's a lost cause you know or i'm doing uh you know i'm I'm having trouble doing this so um i mean i have i don't know about you i have people who i do say this phrase um you know once i once I stop smoking, I will come to church. Right, right, right. Like you know, like that's right. that's. I mean, that's 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 the sad thing. Like once, like this, like smoking is what. So you know, God is you know God is you know. I I think I think what you're saying is right, but I, I propose a question to you because I was just thinking. I wonder is the church focused on sin? It's kind of for that exact factor. I wonder, you know, this is me brainstorming. Uh-huh. I wonder is it because you know, you have people who who love God uh-huh. and uh and know about okay, you know, God's forgiving me uh-huh. for this, you know. Um and you know, going about but just have this this place where, you know, just doing doing some doing stuff, like right. doing doing stuff, you know. Like and, a bunch of gospel musicians. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the gospel musician gospel. Oh man, Tech, you went there. Just, you went, you went there. Saying, is that not true? We both know. <laughs> we both play. This is the gospel musician gospel. I, I play mean, in church. <laughs> I play in church. And no other part of my life has to represent Christ. I'm sorry, go ahead. Gospel music, gospel gotcha. Yeah, yeah, like 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 and who and would live that mentality. So and then and really lives and really, you know, have a have a uh not a full pr- understanding of that and just say, you know, and, and kind of live like, okay, well, you know, I'm playing in church. Right. I'm serving God with my with my gift. Mm-hmm. I'm doing I'm doing the best I can. Mm-hmm. But I'm human. So therefore, you know, I'll 
I'll do this. And then it becomes, it becomes this, uh, it, well, it becomes this, this secret life to a certain right. extent because of course you're not, bla- you know, blasting it, but it becomes a secret life. And I wonder, because I wonder, is that's the church reaction to uh, most of the congregants feeling yeah. to that and to where they say, well, uh, you, 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 you know, right. there's a, to a certain, there's a balance to this thing. And I wonder, so I guess that's the question. Do you think that's, that's like. I think so, but I think it's a bad reaction. Like the Pharisees were jerks, but they also, let's say like Paul, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He thought that he was doing the right, the right thing, thing, doing yeah. the wrong thing. So before he was converted. Before he was converted, mm-hmm. right when he was Saul. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he persecuted the church. Mm-hmm. And if even if you look up church history, a lot of a lot of the persecution that came from the Pharisees or from certain sects because they one thought that Christianity was like blasphemous. Mm-hmm. And, you know, God had taught for so long, you know, not to follow other gods. And so they thought that this was not a fulfillment, they thought it was like a a perversion. And so they, you know, they were attacking it, trying to get it out. And so um, I do think it is a reaction to maybe people who have developed this lukewarm sense of like, God is forgiving me of my sins. Um, You know, I can do whatever and just call you. Yeah, I'm not perfect and just call you Doc. Mm-hmm. And it'll be, it'll be okay, <laughs> man. Hey, you gonna get emails? Bro. Yeah, probably, but they free agree. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I do think that, but like, I think that, uh, freak my. I just had a brain fart. Mm-hmm. No, I, I I do think that that may be a reaction, but. Though the the thing that those people their pursuit isn't on God, mm-hmm. so it's like on both on both aspects, the pursuit always has to be. If, how am I? I'm trying to say this honestly without sounding like a jerk. Mm-hmm. We're just going to sound like a jerk. Okay, I'm gonna sound like a jerk. Yeah, maybe I think that make it easier for you. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, that came out wrong. What well, I'm saying is, you're a jerk. Be a jerk. Everybody, and we, we know we said this last week, everybody mm-hmm. is not saved. Mm-hmm. Um, Some people see the gospel, and some people, it's not their fault because of maybe the church they went to. You know, the church has become, like, even come being African American, mm. the black ch- I know a bunch of people who have a stronger relationship with the culture, culture of church, church. Yep. than God Himself, yep. and so the church has become a culture. And so I partly feel like okay, it's not their fault because mm-hmm. they've been brought up in the in the culture. yeah in the culture of the gospel, the culture of Christianity versus Christ. So they they may not know better, but for some people, it's like you know. <sighs> Everybody's not safe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We all have to give an account for for sins. I mean, I, I feel like you have to know that you have a convenient gospel. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a gospel that just allows you to do whatever you want, mm-hmm. there is no consequence. God is okay with your action. God's cool with it. I mean, you. I feel like you have to know that's a convenient gospel that you have kind of made. Mm-hmm. But some people, you know, some people don't. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of rambling. My honest perspective is those aren't the people that pursue. Because everybody, everybody won't be, I'm trying to think of it. Freaking, I'm going to just say it how I, yeah. and I'm going to just sound like a jerk. All right. Fred's a much better man than me anyway. So. No. Oh. <laughs> It's almost like an investment thing. Mm-hmm. Like you invest in certain things and you see that your like investment isn't flourishing here. Mm-hmm. 
but it's flourishing here. It's like you and you, you know, the gospel is like, I don't know what I'm saying. Cause I, I, I guess I'm trying to say like, and, and maybe this is something that God has to do with me. Like those are the type of people I don't worry about. Mm -hmm. Then that's essentially what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you, I just you, don't you worry just about to them. Say it. <laughs> like, and, and not that I don't care about them. I don't mm -hmm. care about their souls, mm -hmm. but in the scripture, what pe a lot of people get twisted is uh, my wife. My wife told me about, uh, or maybe I shouldn't say that, but anyway, I just said it. My wife told me about a, a friend of hers who she was like, "You shouldn't fellowship with people when I save or don't have them in your house because the Bible says don't have those people in your house." That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says don't have people who claim to be Christians mm. but out there doing whatever. Don't mm. fellowship with those people. Because mm. then Paul even clarifies, he says, of course I'm not talking about the world because then you have to leave the world. Yeah. yeah. And so my main point when I say those are the people that I worry about, those are the people that I personally invest my time in mm. because their behavior can have an effect on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can begin to develop the same convenient, mm -hmm. God lets you do whatever you want gospel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and so... I think that our obligation is to preach and to understand the gospel as it is and not to size it or decline it mm -hmm. based on people's behavior. Yeah. So, like, you know, if that is what they're doing, that's that's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Me preaching extra and sizing up, you know, sin mm -hmm. is not going to convict them. Mm -hmm. It's not going to convict That doesn't bring change, you mm -hmm. know. Again, the goodness, the kindness of God is what draws me into repentance. We're trying to enter into a relationship mm -hmm. with God. And so the deeper that a person enters into a relationship, the, you know, the more mature they get, the more they'll stop mm -hmm. certain things like that. So I don't know. That was kind of like a all-around-the-yard way of answering it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I don't I don't focus on people like that. Yeah, you know, and then I guess from the perspective of, let's say you're a pastor, though, and maybe I'll switch this on you, Pastor Green. Let's say oh. though you're a pastor. I'm not a pastor, though. I'll just say okay. if you were a pastor, okay, Pastor Green, <laughs> yeah, I um, and that. you will, Fred, you you probably going to be a pastor. Look, tech man, like you, you <laughs> gonna be a pastor. <laughs> Said, but you know, you don't feel like look, God's I don't have nothing against past. Like, you know, I I gotta say, I feel like I feel like. Look, look, look we're gonna be a hundred for a second. I'm sorry, I don't want to go. Never mind, I'm not gonna get on this tangent. Ahead, but ahead. but I just want to just say this: uh -huh. <laughs> it's not that I have a thing against pastors. Okay. Because I love pastors. My father's a pastor. Amen. Um, I respect and love pastors, and I since I've seen so much that pastors go through. Uh huh. <laughs> I, unless the Lord taps me on the shoulder uh -huh. and say, Fred, and I would still have to talk with him, but um, be until I get that, uh -huh. I don't want that. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Are you telling me that you do not feel like God is calling you to be a pastor? I, I right now, do not, not today, but in the future. Like, you don't feel like God's calling you to be a pastor. <laughs> ask me your question, Tech. Okay. So who's, who's, who's the best <laughs> So as a pastor, not saying you are now, just say in the future. So for me, I'm not a pastor. Um, so it's maybe more, it's easier for me to say that mm. because you still need to be investing in people. Yeah. But like, I don't, and then maybe this is something God needs to do with me on mm. because, you know, I, I just don't, uh, I don't have arguments that I don't think I can win. Yeah. You know, I don't invest in things that I don't think mm -hmm. will, will bring fruit. And not that I'm saying, like, I'm not going to talk to that person about God. But, like, you give someone the gospel, and if they take that gospel. Wipe your dust off your feet. Oh, I was like, I got dust on my feet. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You give someone the gospel, they take that gospel, and they consider it as an opportunity to sin more. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to spend time arguing <laughs> with them. Hey, you need to stop that. Mm -hmm. Like, there are other people who have been so broken and so changed and who are so open mm -hmm. but just have not heard mm -hmm. uh, the true goodness of God mm -hmm. that I could be talking to and investing in mm -hmm. and, and investing in and winning and them growing, 
that, you know, I, I, I'd rather spend my time there. But maybe that's a self-righteous way of looking at it, and I need uh-huh. to mature in that area. But my, my point is, but if you were a pastor, uh-huh. you would... I would I would think you have to have a different perspective because mm-hmm. there are different people there are people in your church at all walks. So let's yeah. say you're a pastor and you have that person, you have that set group of people. A lot of the time, maybe it's young people, it's, mm-hmm. you know, younger young adults, teens, whatever, and they have this view of the gospel where it's like, uh, you know, they feel like as long as they come to church, you know, mm-hmm. there's people in your church fornicating with mm-hmm. each other. You know, and all types of wild stuff that yeah. would make you want to go. Okay, let me let's deal with fornication, which yeah. you should. Yeah. But like, how do you avoid that trap? If you're, how would you? How do you think you could avoid that trap if you were a pastor? Uh, I think because that that I, and I and that's where it becomes tricky, right? Because you you got all different uh, places, but I think trying to get into the psychology of what they what do they believe the cross what does the cross mean to that uh-huh. person cuz sometimes i think the speaking about the person i'm going to use your example this is not for it say this but i will use your example of the gospel the gospel uh, musician uh real. theology yeah, <laughs> all right but <laughs> but but that philo- which which is you know you know, I'm just going to do, just going to do me. God forgives me to to a certain extent. I'm just going to do whatever. The big guy. The big, yeah. <laughs> I think part of that, from from my experience of talking to some people, sometimes, I think part of that comes from just just accepting and living with a struggle. Um. So what I mean by that is, like, somebody say, "Oh man, I have this. I have this struggle. Oh, I'm supposed to be this Christian." I'm talking about the initial, you know, the initial thing. You come to Christ, but you still got, um, because I mean, let's be a hundred. Like when you when you receive Christ, that doesn't you don't. There's no perfect Christian, right? right. Okay, so that's that's number one to understand, and I think that's another philosophy that is out there. Right. Um, that's on another spectrum. Is like I'm a Christian, so I do everything right. Mm-hmm. But that's that's another subject. But I think that mentality is mm-hmm. so prevalent in the church that when somebody comes to Christ, and and if it's not if if it if if they don't have the correct understanding of what the cross is, like kind of the, some of the things that we talked about, like oh man, I love God, but I got this. And what happens is, and from my experience, from you know, from people that I've talked to, um, is that instead of bringing that to God and addressing that thing, mm-hmm. they put it in a corner and like, and it's never they just they just accept, and it, over time it just becomes like. This this secret room right. that I'm just going to dwell in because I'm not going to bring it before God as if God doesn't already know and see, but it's this it's like this shame like right, right. because sin brings shame and it's like, but I'm supposed to be this Christian and I'm not going to bring it to God and it be and it, it, it festers it, it it brings you know it gets worse you know you, you just so you now you just have this whole double 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 life and you just resides like okay well this is how it is i love i could love god but i could continue to fall in this right. this area and there's no i mean it is the way it is so therefore i could go to church and praise god but this 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 area over here it is it, it is what it is because right. i'm human you know so when that's not that is not the case that is truly not the case like there is I think under like the full gospel understanding is is to understand where you are is to say you know what I wasn't I'm not saved because I of any action that I've done as far as being perfect or imperfect I'm saved because it's a full work of Jesus Christ. Right. So with that understanding is now I could come to him and this is me. This is me. Good, bad, horrible, worse. This is me, God. Right. This is me. And I'm comfortable. And I think understanding, like you said, repentance, understanding what the cross means, what Jesus meant, re- uh, understanding sin right. helps you with that. Because if you have this philosophy of God, of I'm a Christian, oh, I, should, I shouldn't, now or immediately I shouldn't do this anymore. Or I'm a Christian, um, I should, if I come, another philosophy, if I... If God, if if God knows this, or if people know this, 
then um, I'm going to get this uh, quote unquote spanking from God. God hates me now. Right. Like it's, it's like, no, no, no. Like like what the gospel what the gospel uh, teaches is that God has Jesus died for our sins and that we have that place to go to Him. So if we do sin, right. we could confess it. And there is I want to go. Uh, I want to go first. Uh, I want to just read that scripture. Um, I think first, was it First John? Oh, yes, yes, yes. First John. Um, it says, I want to read the whole thing, but I know it's kind of getting close to time. But if we walk in the light, I'm going to start at verse, uh, chapter, uh, first John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, no, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, and he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And I do want to go to verse uh, chapter two. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. So I just want to just uh, clarify, like, like, so it says, like, if we say that we have no sin, um, then we deceive in ourselves. I think that's very important to start to start there. It's like, hey, Christian, yes, you are saved, but um, there's still some areas that God is going to come around and He going ha- He want to deal with, and that's where we have to come to the reality of accepting. And that's you know, let's start there. I'm, I'm speaking from a pastor from to somebody who has that. Like, hey, that secret door, that secret door that you think that you know you could keep over here and keep separate from God. No. Um, what's being a Christian is your whole, you walking in light. There is no darkness. Like there is no secret door. There is no room. Like you're, you are naked, just like Adam, naked and not ashamed before God. Everything. Here I am. Right. Here right. I am. And then a beautiful thing what John says is that now don't be afraid. Okay. Mm. Don't be afraid because don't be afraid to confess your sins. Don't be afraid to say, this is my struggle. Right. This is what I have because God is faithful and he's just to forgive us. Yeah. So there is forgiveness there. Right. There's forgiveness there when you bring it before him. See, you have to, I think it's important for people to understand like there is a place as a Christian, I'm, and I'm, I'm speaking from a, because I grew up in the church, and this is right. like, I think this is, this is one of the things that um, we in the church struggle with. Go to church. It's like we, we have this secret door. Like we have this, our lives is like a double life. Right. It's like this secret door. Like I can't bring this for, for whatever reasons, you know? But we have to, part of being a Christian is acknowledging your, like, hey, like, okay, this is here. Here's another imperfect thing I do. I'm bringing it before God. And there is forgiveness here. And there is, uh, he is just um, and able to, and we have a, and I like the way verse, uh, chapter two, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. He's on our side. He's, he's, he's advocate. He's like a, like a, like a, a lawyer for us. He's, right. he's advocating for us, for the father. Um, that's why he says, he said, I write this so you won't sin. I write this like we'll be talking about so you, so you won't sin, so you won't get, so you won't just go buck wild and you just think like, oh, I'm just going to do whatever, do whatever. But if you do, don't just put it in the corner. Don't just put it in this whole separate dark room. Confess it. Bring it with the understanding that you have an advocate, right. Jesus Christ on the right hand of the Father. Um, so... Um, I, I mean, there's more I want to say on that, <laughs> but I think I think that's a that's a big a big topic. Just to kind of say what you're saying is just that I think we do focus so much on um, the wrong thing as far as actions. 
Um, I think there's, I think the balance is, you know, understand like, no, I'm, I, I pursue, pursue Jesus. If you love me, you keep my commandments. I think that is the pursuit. But in that pursuit, we have to also be aware in that pursuit of Jesus and not to be, also be aware that we're still a work in progress. We're, we're still a work in progress. And as a pastor, I think, uh, uh, no, 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 not, not as a pastor. <laughs> no, but I'm using an example. No, 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 no. Just say I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I think that's one way I would try to handle is just address their ideology and what what they what they view uh, sin in their life and what they view living as a Christian is because sometimes a lot of times their view as living as a Christian is I I gotta be perfect. And because I can't be perfect, well, then, but I still love Jesus, I'll just, I'll just chalk it up to, well, I'm a, I ain't perfect, and I just live with, I just live with this bondage. I just live with this. When there is freedom there, when you bring it before God and allow God to do the work. Yeah, I think, and I guess to, I would probably end up doing the same length. <laughs> But I guess to close it mm -hmm. as like a practical thing, mm -hmm. I think um, you know the and the danger with the whole even going back to like the repentance from sin thing is it leads you into a trap mm -hmm. of I, I can't stop sinning. Why am I such a bad person? Mm -hmm. That condemnation comes on. That brings you distance from God. You're not praying. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're condemning yourself because you're not praying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to be praying, right? And and you're sinning, and you know, you're just like, why can't I stop this? So your your narr your self narrative now mm -hmm. is that you're a bad person mm -hmm. who does bad things, and when you and every time you do something wrong, right? You're just Reiterating that self narrative, mm -hmm. you're a bad person who does bad things, mm -hmm. and we do something right, you don't pay attention to it mm -hmm. because it it goes against the narrative. Mm -hmm. I think just as a takeaway, um, there's just two scriptures I want to look at. One, I want to come back to what you read in John because I thought that that was deep, and uh, but let's go to Hebrews real quick. Mm -hmm. Chapter nine, and to be honest, and you know, Hebrews is so full with what we're talking about, and you know, he goes and he compares Jesus to because he goes on this long thing about um, you know Christ dying for sins once and for all, and everything that he's he's, he's done for us on the cross, but. Um, I want to read this part here. Verse Hebrews 9, starting at verse 11. But Christ has arised as a high priest of good things to come through the greater and more perfect tent, not made by hands, that that is not of this creation, and not by bloods of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered, check this out, he entered once and for all to the most holy place, obtaining eternal redemption, so that Christ has come to eternally redeem you from your sins, so that you can have a relationship uh, and now I'm just talking <laughs> so that you can have a relationship with him. Um, going back to verse 13, for the blood of goat of goats and bulls and ashes and young cows sprinkled on those who were defiled, sanctify them for ritual purity of flesh. How much more with the blood of Christ through who through the 
eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse our conscious mm-hmm. our consciences mm-hmm. from dead works to serve a living God. So, you know, we know, some of us may know, you know, before if you wanted to deal with your sins, you had to do this whole sacrificing thing. But as we just read, he wanted to, he wanted to, he wanted us to obtain eternal redemption. Now you can go further into this, and some people do, and say that everybody is forgiven because of this. I, you, you know, I, I don't go as far as some people go with that, but in Christ wanted us to obtain eternal redemption and to cleanse our consciences. So. He like you know he that guilt, that shame, that you know thing. He wants to cleanse your conscience. It goes on to say that the problem with the old sacrifice is that every time they would do it, it would remind them of the sin that they had done. So, you know, it goes back to the scripture that you read. Like God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So you still need to accept Jesus. You still need to enter into a relationship with Jesus. And this is why repentance, right? When Jesus says repent, is so much bigger than your sins. It's You need to change your whole perspective mm-hmm. on life. You need to change your whole priority on what's important. And just as like a takeaway for anybody who may be like, for us all, right? We're all struggling with sin. Mm-hmm. I think the, the or, or struggling with different things. I think the scripture that you read is so key. And actually, you gave this to me one time when I was I was really going through and feeling really like condemned. And you gave me this scripture to read. And I, I just remember reading it and I was like, well, this makes me feel worse. And then I just kept reading it. And I, and I got it. It just like clicked. And that is First uh, John 1, First John 1, chapter 5. And it says, this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light and in him. And, and there is no darkness. And, you know, and after that, it says, well, if we fellowship with him and walk, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. And only when I read that, I felt like so condemned, like, ah, oh, I'm practicing darkness. I'm a liar. <laughs> but, like, I just read it over and over again, and it just clicked. Like, this is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light and there is no darkness in him. God is light, and there's no darkness in him. And what what it what clicked in me is it's not a, a like a rebuke. It is a invitation. So if you are struggling and you feel like you're stuck in darkness. This is the message that we've heard. This is what is announced to you. This is the invitation that if you want to get out of the darkness, Mm. walk into the light. Walk into the light. God God is light, and in him there is no darkness. If you want to be free from darkness, if you feel condemned, you feel bound to sin, and what you would notice in your own life, that everything in your life, including your sin, including time, including problems, everything is trying to keep you from walking, from fellowshipping with him. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that, like you, mm-hmm. sin is rarely quick. Mm-hmm. Sin takes time to do. Mm-hmm. And then there's the time of like feeling bad that you did it. And so then there's all this time of not being in, mm-hmm. not walking, in, not being in a light. And so, you know, for me, the takeaway would be if you want to come out of darkness and really be set free, make your pursuit. You won't, you know, it won't happen. It may not happen uh, 
Like over, it won't happen overnight, but make your pursuit God yeah. him more and more. Mm-hmm. And don't make it, okay, I need to, it's not what you need to stop doing. Mm-hmm. It's what you need to start doing. It's just like a a, a diet, you know, mm-hmm. I'm trying to change, or not a diet, but, you know, changing, being a healthier life. You you know, you need to do something every day. Mm-hmm. Just being practical, you need to do something every day that draws you closer to Jesus. Because right now, the way life is set up, you know, Kevin Hart has that joke with my belt. Bank account is set up. Mm. The way my life is set up is if I'm not doing something every day that draws me closer to him, by default, I'm doing something every day that draws me farther and farther mm. away. Mm. So if I'm not if I'm not making it a point to press forward, it's mm. it's like the being on the escalator that goes backwards. Or mm. like the little yeah. Mm. It's like if I'm not making it a point to press forward, mm. just by standing still, I'm automatically going, going backwards. backwards. And this is how so many believers end up so far from God. Because we need to be doing something every day that draws us deeper and deeper and deeper closer to God. Fred Green, what would be your uh, last takeaway from here or your point for people who may be struggling with this? I, I, I kind of exactly what you said is just, you know, uh, God loves us. Amen. Um, it's a scripture I, I love. It says that God demonstrated. His love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, um, Christ died for us. Like He demonstrated, He sent His Son. And why he, that, that's um, He He loves us, and I think that's um, and and then to understand that you know that God is not like us. Sometimes we think God is like a human. So you know. Oh man, I messed up. So of course He's holding this against me or stuff. Like right, right. like. Fellowship with God is is nothing that you nothing. There's nothing on this earth that could, could be compared to it because right. God is God, right? right. So I, you know, I would just encourage people, you know, um, who who may be feeling in a place of feeling condemned or uh, feeling stuck, um, um, you know, just. Just pursue Jesus. Right. Just pursue Jesus. Like he's he's not waiting with a belt in his hand. You know he's not waiting um, to to uh, run your list down. But he's truly just like the parable. Jesus, he's gonna he's running toward like as you, when you come, he's running towards you, mm-hmm. kiss you, um, and restore you. And the deep part about that parable, he's restore him back to the place, right? Back to back to the place. And I, I think that's. Uh, I think that's so important just to hold on to that the the love motivating factor. And last thing is just, you know, make that an everyday pursuit right, right, right. for Jesus. Because it's not it's not natural. Um you it's not natural for you to wake up. You know, it takes it takes it takes like I'm gonna pursue Jesus today. I'm gonna pursue what he has to say. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn more about him we're going to fall in love with him it's, it's really like i said last time on the podcast relationship is like a relationship that we understand from a human perspective right. it takes it takes time it takes it takes effort and i would just encourage um but it's it's worth it it's worth it it, it definitely 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 is worth it. amen all right so this has been episode two of mm-hmm. disrupt the face mm-hmm. faith podcast uh, a couple quick things before we go i would try to make sure that this is available in as many places as many ways as any one of you guys may need it so look uh, follow subscribe on youtube uh disrupt the faith podcast uh twitter uh disrupt the faith uh, send us an email at disruptedfaithpodcast at gmail.com. Also on Instagram at Disrupted Faith Podcast, if I'm not mistaken. Join the conversation. Have this conversation with us. Uh, hashtag Disrupted Faith. I mean, Fred said some pretty inflammatory things today. <laughs> you may want to just tell Fred to read his Bible. <laughs> Let us have those conversations. Send us uh, your comments, worries, fears, concerns. Uh, you, you know, you definitely are a part of the conversation. So this yes. is yes. 
episode two of the short to face podcast again it does us a huge favor that wherever you're listening to this for this itunes spotify google play we're on all those to just go leave a review and like if you hate it and you're like man enough of this blasphemy leave a great review and like okay <laughs> uh so that is it you guys be blessed this is episode two we will see you next time yes